Hi guys, yeah, McGann, and I am so excited to move forward in the There I Read It series where I am going over Harry Potter books for the first time ever in my life and I just made it into Goblet of Fire. I didn't really think I'd make it this far, but uh, this book is a lot longer than the other three, so uh, we'll see if I survive. There's part of me going, this is going to be the last one that I can realistically get through, but we'll see. Maybe I'll get so addicted that my dyslexia won't be killing me and I can get through this series easier. I, I don't know, does that work? Can you just decide to be interested and focused enough to not have dyslexia anymore? I know, I know, if I continue after this book, I'm definitely gonna have to switch to the audiobooks because I just, I can't keep up with how many words are in front of me. But enough whining from me, I've got my notes here and ready, and there's not a ton yet for Goblet of Fire. But just for context, I did start it on April 23rd, 2021. So on the timeline of what has come out right now, I have just finished putting out the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets stuff. So I am a full book ahead. That's awesome. I didn't realize I'd get that far ahead. But this first chapter of Goblet of Fire, I mean, oh my gosh, I feel like we graduated and are now in big boy books. But this chapter starts off by talking about the Riddle House, which is in in Little Hangleton, and it's just this house up on the hill that belonged to a rich family, and it used to be glorious, but now it's really decaying and falling apart, and nobody's living in there, so it's it's kind of nasty. And as the story goes, about 50 years ago, the entire Riddle family was murdered inside of the house. But the townspeople weren't too upset about that news because Mr. and Mrs. Riddle were these rich old snobs, and their adult son, Tom, Yes, Tom Riddle was the worst of them all. So when these murders happened, the police took in a man named Frank Bryce, and he was the gardener for the Riddle house. He lived in like a little cottage off to the side on the property. So he had keys to the place and he was in the right proximity to do the murdering. So they drag Frank out to Great Hangleton and Frank is telling the cops that it wasn't him. There was this dark haired, pale teenage boy that did it, but nobody else had seen anybody like that around town. So they think Frank is making it up. But that really doesn't matter because the report on those bodies, I assume an autopsy came up, it said that the riddles were not poisoned, stabbed, strangled, shot, suffocated, or harmed in any way at all that they could tell. But they did all have a look of terror in their face. So since the authorities couldn't find any trace of foul play, they had to let Frank go. However, that did not keep the townsfolk from muttering to each other that I think Frank really did it anyways. So being a war vet who was already PTSD shell-shocked, Frank really really didn't mind staying to himself in that cottage forever. And the house has had several new owners, they've all kept Frank on, but nobody really stays in the Riddle house for long. And the guy who owns it now has it for tax reasons, even though nobody is really sure what taxes those could possibly be benefiting. But one night, in what I assume is the present, Frank, who is now 77 years old, looks up at the Riddle house and sees what looks like a fire going on up there. And he's like, crap, I bet these stupid neighborhood kids set the place on fire. So being the dutiful gardener that he is, Frank goes up to investigate. Now Frank gets into the house. He says he hasn't been in there in years and it's all dusty and he's using his cane to get up the stairs and there's a door cracked open and he hears these two really odd voices talking to each other. One of the voices calls the other Wormtail and he asks, where is Nagini? And Nagini turns out to be a 12 foot long snake who apparently gets milked to be fed to this voice who, okay, let's not even play charades. We know who we're talking to, right? It's Lord Voldemort and Peter Pettigrew. But Frank has no idea who these people are. They don't sound familiar. They don't seem to look familiar. And they're saying all of these weird terms that Frank doesn't understand. For example, at one point he hears them say that they have to wait for the Quidditch World Cup to end. And Frank's like, 
Quidditch. Let me clean out my ears here. That's not a word. And then he hears things like muggle and it starts to dawn on Frank that, wait, this must be a code. And if people are using codes, that means they're either spies or criminals. And we never get the full context of what is going on in this conversation. And I like that. That lets the mystery unfold and we can piece things together in a more interesting way. But Wormtail is talking about how his lord shouldn't be waiting to go after Harry Potter. Harry Potter's too well guarded. He's going to be too hard to get at. They should just use any old witch or wizard instead of Harry. And Pettigrew keeps talking how using somebody else will make it faster and easier to get it done. But I don't know what it is. They don't fully explain it. Although I have ideas. I'm assuming that Voldemort needs to take something out of a wizard or take their body or something and then he'll rise from the dead with their form. Which in context clues that makes sense because Voldemort is all kind of mushy and I don't, I don't even know what you would call him. He kind of feels like a blob baby with a head that Wormtail is carrying around. But Pettigrew is like, let me just go out and I'll get somebody, any witcher wizard, and it will help you. And Voldemort sounds like such an insecure, I can't say the word I wrote down, but <laughs> female dog. He's like, no, you just want an excuse to leave me. You don't believe I'm going to come back to power. You don't trust in me. You won't take care of me. And oh my gosh, at that point, I wanted to pick him up and chuck him out the window. Ugh. I don't know how or why Peter Pettigrew is like, I want to hitch my wagon to that star. But the name Bertha Jorkins keeps coming up and they keep saying different things about her. Like Voldemort and Pettigrew questioned her and killed her and she worked for the ministry. And it it's sort of implied that Pettigrew didn't want to hurt her. He just knew who she was. But because Bertha knew who he was, she had to go. And it's also loosely implied that maybe Voldemort took some essence or body parts or whatever out of her, but it's not really put out there firmly enough for me to say like, yes, that's definitely what happened. And then Voldemort starts talking about Wormtail's reward and how it will be at the very end of everything. And he says something that Peter will be as useful as Bertha was. And Peter and myself were both thinking, is Voldemort going to kill Peter Pettigrew? And this whole conversation, Frank is out there in the hallway, just not even sure what to do. He's losing his mind. He's sweating so bad and getting so shaky. He can't even move. And then Nagini comes by and he's like, holy crap, I'm going to get eaten by this snake. But she goes all the way into the room with Voldemort and they hiss at each other, which also freaks out Frank. And then Voldemort's like, oh, there's somebody out in the hallway. Go get him, Wormtail. And so Frank, knowing that there's danger, does not make any effort to run away. He goes into the room. He gets all puff chest and brave of, I'm going to report you. You're up to no good. You're talking about killing people. Which I would not have been. I would have been like, I didn't hear nothing. I just wandered in here. <laughs> no, really, I would have probably started doing sign language and just really confused them until they were like, ah, just get out of here. I heard nothing. I saw nothing. Thing. Start using my cane like one of the blind tapping canes. But then Voldemort decides he wants to look this dude in the eye and he has Wormtail turn the chair around and he's all deformed, but they don't describe it very much beyond that. So again, I'm picturing some little blob baby with a gross head. And then Voldemort takes out his wand, so apparently he still has at least two fingers or one really good flipper, and kills poor Frank, which causes Harry to wake up 200 miles away. I totally forgot that he and Voldemort were connected like that. And I'm also assuming that the question I had at the end of the last book of Prisoner of Azkaban, where Peter Pettigrew was prophesied to get with his Dark Lord that night before midnight. So does that mean Voldemort had been in the Forbidden Forest the entire time since the first book? And that's how Pettigrew found him and took him away? Because otherwise, I don't know how Pettigrew would have possibly figured out where Voldemort was. Plus, in the Chamber of Secrets, Dumbledore is talking about well, we heard that the Dark Lord is out in Brazil being taken care of by his followers. Some, something along that 
plot line. And obviously that wasn't the case because in this chapter, Voldemort is saying repeatedly how Peter is the only one who's come to him. So that is all very interesting. And I wonder if they're going to explain that and unravel that further. That's, see, that is the best and worst part about doing this chapter by chapter because I am very strict with myself that even if I am enthralled, I will not read ahead to the next chapter until I've sat down and recorded my notes from the chapter I just read. And it sounds like this book is not going to match up with the movie much at all, which I love that because that keeps my brain active. But the fourth movie was also my favorite movie, so I wonder if I'm going to like the book as much as I did the movie. But these are all questions that we can find out together as this unfolds in an ungodly amount of pages and chapters. This book by itself is almost a year worth of weekly chapter videos. So I don't know, I might do some cases where I post multiple videos in a week. I, I'm not sure. But I am open to feedback if you guys want to drop me some comments on your thought about that. And again, other than commenting, which I love to get everybody's thoughts, but no spoilers. Spoilers, we keep this spoiler free because like I said, I stay right in the chapter I'm at and I don't know what happens after that because I've never read these books before. So don't spoil things for me. But I love talking to people in the comments about this stuff. And if you like, share, subscribe, please, please, please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> to my poor dead little channel. But you know, no pressure. Anything you feel like doing, I am very grateful for. And I will end this here and see you next time, family members. Bye! Well, family members, we're almost done, but I want to invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as my own personal self, and I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey, McGann, I want to mail you something. How do I do that? Easy. Just click the About tab on my channel page, and my most current P.O. Box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with the family and the fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out the fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos, whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video. We should recommend it to other people. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya. See you next time, family members. Bye.